Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Alrighty, well it's about, <laughs> uh, I don't know, 7 o'clock in the morning and we're going to be testing the igniter. So, got the grill here, hold on, I have to back up a little bit. This camera zooms automatically, it's kind of a pain. So what I'm going to do, we're just, I've got the controller on already and, and there we go. Ah, uh, the ceramic igniter. So, yeah, I cleaned it all out for the video. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn this guy on. Oops. Sorry. Uh, let's see. on. I think I smell something already. Wow. Now I vacuumed this thing out so it might take the pellets a little bit <laughs> of time to come out. As you can see it's it's already heating up. Whoa, what was that? That wasn't good. Lost our igniter. Okay, so we're on igniter number two, test number two. The other one cracked and um, it actually wire burnt, burnt up, so it, was an, it had an open in it, and uh, which is good. That's a good failure rate. Don't want it shorting. And so let's go ahead and try this again. So I'll go ahead and hit start. Yeah, see how this thing does. Yeah, the uh, last igniter had cracked. And that's what that popping was. It was the ceramic cracking, I guess. <laughs> and then it just finally shorted out. Okay, well, I can already smell it heating up. I don't know, can you see it? I don't see it, I see it glowing yet. Let's see if I can hold it. There we go. It's starting to glow. Come on, auger. Need some fuel. Well, we don't seem to be getting any fuel. I don't know why. The auger is not running. Oh, there it goes. Yes, yeah, so I vacuumed it out. It's probably, uh-oh, why is it not running very much? Okay, hold on, let me stop this. Okay, so we've got, <laughs> I went in there, the, the um, it was set to three, three seconds for uh, the duty cycle. That's why I wasn't dumping any pellets in there. I went ahead and started it. Yeah, you can see the igniter is igniting. Uh, now it's going to get some proper amount of fuel. That'll be helpful. And uh, it needs a little bit more fuel there. Yeah, so when you vacuum these things out or change pellets, you know, as everyone knows it. You kind of vacuum out the auger tube a little bit. There's no pellets left in the pot, so you're kind of starting from scratch. But yeah, that thing seems to be just igniting <laughs> lightning. I'm just by the infrared coming off it. Look at that. Uh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's only a minute. Well, maybe a little longer than a minute. We'll say a minute. We'll say a minute and a half. Be generous. Look at that. Well, that's, that's pretty much what we wanted to see. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run a little bit, but I'm not gonna keep my phone in here and get it all smoky, so uh, 
We'll check back in. Okay, so let's take a look at this igniter. And uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well on camera. It's, the crack is very small. So, and this is the igniter that, <laughs> that broke in the, uh, in the grill earlier. This is the second day for me, so uh, I thought I'd remind myself what we're doing. But yeah, I wanted to see what happened to the igniter and the grill. And, and I thought it was because of the set screw. You know, I, I put a set screw in there to hold it. And that still might have caused it uh, because it, it clamped it tightly to the mount, I guess, that were the igniter mounts. But I was looking at this thing and let me see if I can, if you guys can see it. Yeah, so right, right there, there's a dark mark and it's right on the line of the crack. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but then the crack comes down here and around and then over and down. And I see a black spot. That's probably what where it uh, shorted or opened, I guess. And then it, anyway, the crack comes down to right here. So yeah, this looks like the, the fault line and and I don't really see anything else on here. But they, yeah, that crack pretty much goes all the way around. See, it's, it's almost all the way around. So I, I'm, I'm thinking what happened when I, when I put it in the grill, it was, you know, the screw was holding it firmly in there. And then when I, when I mounted the pot inside the grill with the igniter mounted in the in the fire pot, I must have put some kind of torque on it. It didn't crack when I was, you know, tightening everything up, but but maybe with a little bit of heat and the metal moving around, it was enough to break it. So yeah, that that set screw is probably we're probably going to have to come up with with something that will allow this thing to to move around inside the metal a little bit so it doesn't you know put a lot of torque on this thing because unlike metal uh, ceramic is very rigid as you probably know and and it's not <laughs> it's not good to put a you know any kind of stress on it. oh there we go well, let's take a better look at it I was well I was trying to break it earlier and I really couldn't but now we've got it broke let's let's take a another look at it and yeah, so you can kind of see the line I don't know if it'll focus or not oh that's interesting I don't know if, if you guys can see this or not I'll have to look at it but yeah you can see the the conductors going through the ceramic right here I guess the heating elements and it looks like there's an inner I guess that's inner ceramic then they must lay the conductor material. It's probably like a. I doubt if it's a wire. It looks. It looks to be like a. Um, you know, like some kind of carbon trace. Anyway, it's very fine. They must lay it down there, and then they put another layer of, layer of ceramic on it. Wasn't that interesting? And uh, yeah, here's the, the top of it. It's it's actually open. I'm not sure why it's not solid in there, maybe for some kind of expansion reasons. Yeah, you can see here's the inner part, here's the outer part. And you can see where the trace is kind of, hopefully my autofocus isn't messing up with my fingers there. You can kind of see the trace is coming around, come around through here and then loop so they don't go quite to the end. Oh, they also have these gaps right here. I wonder, I wonder if that's also for thermal expansion or if that's just part of the manufacturing process. I don't know. Oh, it only has one, one ridge. I doubt if there's any thermal expansion ceramic. <laughs> I mean, as you know, it's like, you know, if you've ever over tightened a toilet and broke it, that's, <laughs> it's kind of the same. It's very rigid. It doesn't, 
doesn't flex very much so maybe that's for mounting so it doesn't twist like a key key hole i don't know anyway uh, there's kind of a closer look at it and as you saw the second test did did much better i mounted it in there looser and didn't use a set screw and that seemed to uh work well so there you have it i'll talk to you later don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.